Thanks for checking out this interview on Coaching Football with Brian Klee. Back in late June, I had the privilege to sit down and have an interview with Coach Kenny Simpson. Uh, great guy as far as just wanting to help grow the game of football, wanting to help uh, younger coaches out. He, uh, I reached out to him and asked if he would be willing to sit down and, and give some advice for, for first-time head coaches as I was uh, about to go into my first year as a head coach. I've been coaching for 18 years at this point, and here in my 19th year, I, I had my first year as a head coach. And like I said, Coach Simpson was gracious enough to sit down and, and share some of his wisdom, some of his experiences with me, and, and, and offer some advice for first-year head coaches. I figured it'd be something that any aspiring head coaches would be interested in uh, possibly checking out. So going to share that with you coming up here in, in a minute. Um, I really want to thank everyone for the continued support on the channel, uh, whether you've, you've watched the videos or liked something and the subscriber count um, <laughs> keeps going up, which which is, it, it makes me want to get back to getting videos posted a little bit more regularly. So thank you to that. And uh, thanks again to Coach Simpson. Uh, a great resource, I think, uh, in, in coaching in general, has a variety of books out there. Find a Way is, is his biggest book about being a head coach a um, bunch of offensive system defensive system stuff i'll uh, share a link to his websites and his his twitter and, and all that in the description down below so any aspiring head coaches or any uh first time head coaches even even head coaches who who maybe want just uh more philosophy i guess on, on being a head coach and running a program uh might want to check out the rest of this video I, I hope you do i hope we all get something out of it and we keep uh using this game to teach the young men that we coach um, it, to be better men. And, and as Coach Simpson talks about later on in the interview coming up here, um, helping guide the current young men to become better sons and eventually husbands and fathers and, and community leaders. So sit back and enjoy. Hi, Coach. How's it going? Thanks. Thanks for making time, man. Oh, no really problem. appreciate it. I'm gonna look rough because I'm in a fireworks stand. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're making the big bucks, right? Because, oh man, we're trying, trying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, 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 what's your background in coaching uh, leading up to? You're in Searcy, Arkansas, right now, correct? Well, I am. I'm actually heading. Back. I'm right now. I'm in Little Rocks. So I'm doing a fireworks stand, but Understood. Um, I was head coach at Searcy the previous season. I've been the head coach at Southside for about uh, nine years, and then I was in Montgomery before then as a head coach. Uh, for three years and I'm actually kind of side business stuff not just fireworks but other uh, coaching materials I've been producing I'm actually stepping back away from being a head coach because I know the responsibility you're about to walk into and uh, and, and, and for me my time had been served and I've, I've got a chance to do something a little different so uh, in, in a way I mean you're you're, you're helping coaches more right <laughs> coming up I mean that's my mindset yeah my mindset was I want to be there for the next generation. There's guys like you that I think are going to do some awesome things. And old guys like me can tell you a whole lot of things of not to do, and, and maybe I can help guys out doing that. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. Um, how did you know you were ready to, to be a head coach when you, you pulled the trigger? Were you ready? Nobody's probably ever ready. You know, it's, it's kind of – it's not the same level, but it's kind of like nobody's ready to be president or nobody's ready to be a dad. You know, you prepare, but until you do it, you know, you just kind of have to learn the job. Um, and, and I was 27, so in my mind, I knew everything, you know. Uh -huh. uh, and, I, and I quickly found out, now that I'm 41, that I, don't, I now at least know what I don't know. You know, and so that's one of those things, a lot of times as a young, full of testosterone guy, uh -huh. um, you, you overestimate what you're ready for. So I thought I was ready uh, and I did some good things. I don't want to act like I was just a complete, you know, was yeah. lost, but I did a lot of things that I regret. Uh, that you do different now that you've got uh, 14 some years of, of experience, understood. Okay. Right. Um, when you when you first get hired, what are your top priorities for, for first getting hired or a new job at a new place even? One is evaluating, you know, uh, you don't have a lot of time, you know, to me, uh, depending on when you got hired, I know you got hired kind of late, which yep. was usually for a first time head coach. That's kind of how it's going to be. Um, you get hired late, 
So priority wise, you've got to move kind of quickly, but you want to evaluate current staff. You know, I don't know situations of everybody out there. Some states, you can just bring your whole staff in. Some states, you kind of are stuck with what you get. Some states, it might be you can do a few things. Uh, so you need to evaluate that very, very, very quickly because uh, the right staff or the wrong staff is probably the number one mistake a lot of young coaches make. I've been super blessed that I knew that early on. Okay. So I've always been around myself with good coaches and you're going to have issues. Everyone has issues. Yep. Uh, but as a head coach, you're as strong as your staff is, you know, because now as X's and O's that you know is great and that will help. But you can almost throw that out the window, depending on the size of the school you're at. Uh, right. Your job as a head coach is to find guys around you that can do that stuff. Okay. And that's, that's, that's why I've held off on, on being a head coach for, for quite some time. Um, what is your uh, – What's been like, I guess, your coaching philosophy or, or your program mission when you've been a coach? Well, my number one thing, especially even as a young coach, I knew I wanted it. You know, at least I knew to say it. I didn't know the effects, how real it was. So I've always held the belief that our job is to raise the next generation of fathers, of husbands, of workers, you know, of, of people that are going to represent our community. Uh, when you're 27, you, you know, I, was, I wanted to do that. I really did. Um, but a lot of times winning came ahead of that. You know, and, and you got to win because they fire you if you don't. I mean, I'm not saying you, you got to yep. do that. That's part of what we're hired to do. Uh, but as I've gotten better um, and gotten older, I've realized that a lot of times winning will just happen if you do everything else. Understood. Well, and that's – thank you. Thank you. Great answer. Uh, I mean, that, that's a powerful answer, in my opinion. Um, how, do you, how do you really kind of develop that, that culture that, that ends up helping those young men that come to us? They're already usually pretty good students, pretty good student athletes if, if they're involved in football. How do, how do you take them from, from good to great and, and kind of build that culture of, of leading them to become great husbands and, and one day fathers and, and community leaders? Good. Well, you're in a good situation if all of your athletes are good students because I'm, I'm not, I don't always have that joy. Uh, a lot of times they're 17 year old kids that don't, they don't think more than five minutes ahead of time. And so that's understood. A lot yeah. of, that's, and that's a lot of times really what we're teaching them in football. We're teaching them as a student, we're teaching them as a person is, you know, you want tomorrow's version of you to be grateful you existed. You know, he doesn't need to regret you making a lot of stupid things like not turning your homework in or skipping workout or skipping practice. Do things so that your tomorrow's version, you know, the next guy, it's you, it literally is you, will mm -hmm. benefit from what you've done. And I think if you can get kids kind of thinking more than one day at a time, you're really onto something pretty good. Okay. And I mean, they're not all good students, but they're, oh, wow. they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, I'll put it, they're mildly harder working than, you know, the kid that just goes home after school. And, no, you know, and I, I think yeah. it's a great point, Coach. I don't want to go off on a tangent with you. I think it's a, I think people, especially administrators that are good administrators, recognize that, yes, athletes on average are going to be better students than non-athletes. So it kind of, I don't know if you're going to go this direction some questions, but that's also why a good administrator and a good coach wants to keep athletes in their program because they recognize the benefits of that. Okay, outstanding. Um, kind of, yeah, a little bit of a follow-up on that. Um, like, I'm sure like most coaches, you, you got a handful of guys that would potentially be talented football players. How do you go about recruiting your own hallways? It's tough. I mean, it's tough because it's a real fine balance. You know, you, I have found through my experience that, you know, I'm going to ask kids to play. I want them to want to be out there, but I don't want to beg kids because generally what ends up happening is, yeah, it may be a great athlete, but you get a lot of bitter feelings on your team. Are you going to bend over and change rules or, or standards for that kid to get him out? You know, uh -huh. so we do want to recruit our hallways. I mean, you're as good as your players are. I firmly believe that. You know, you better find good players because you're going to look a lot smarter. At least I have. When I've got good players, I look pretty smart. But we want to create a culture where they know they're welcome. So for me, a few small things. Uh, I attend every basketball game. I, I love basketball. I love the sport of basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go watch the choir 
concert. I'll go watch the – a lot of head coaches don't recognize the value of showing your face on your campus and letting kids know, hey, I'm vested. And even if I don't have a football player in the play at the school, and I don't really want to see, you know, some play, I'm going to go so that they understand I'm vested here. I care about the full school. And I think sometimes when that happens, kids recognize – uh, you, that you're there for them. Understood. Great answer. Um, Walk into your coach to get my chart. You're fine. I don't think I'm uh, which front. You're fine. Uh, how you, you mentioned obviously finding quality assistance, and I, I I think I've got two of kind of the four assistant spots figured out. Um, how do you go about developing those assistants once you've found them? Okay. Uh, well, first, in the hiring process, things I'm looking for is good people. You know, and if you if you have a chance to hire, um, experience is great, and the guy who's won a state championship is great, and I got to understand X's and O's. But it's I can teach a guy football, and I can teach a guy my expectations. I can't turn a cancer, and I can't turn a guy who doesn't share my belief system into that. So. I won't hire guys if I don't feel they fit kind of the mission of what I'm about. Sorry, I got my chair here now. Or the mission of what you know, we want them to be about. Uh, once you have them, so once we have these guys in place, you know, we're going to look at um, being honest, but not overbearing. And then the hardest thing you'll probably have, Coach, if you're like me, is you're going to want to micromanage these guys. You know, you brought in good guys. You mentioned it. It's really hard to let somebody have ownership and do something maybe even slightly different than you would have done it Understood. when you're the head coach. And so that's a hard, 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 hard thing to do. So generally what we do as coaches is either we completely ignore it and then we blow up when it fails or we're over their shoulder every two seconds and we don't let them get any better. And so that's kind of the hard balance that as I've gotten older, I've gotten better at of pulling a guy in, you know, letting him try something that was a little different than I probably would have done it. And then asking, why'd you do that? And then sometimes we go with his idea. You know, if it falls in line with the mission of what we want to do, uh -huh. it's not going to hurt anything, try it. You know, and that's okay. hard. That's really hard as a head coach. Finding that balance of, of when you know they're, they're ready to, to kind of go out on a limb or and whatnot and, and then empowering them to do so. Okay. Right. Understood. Right. And you just mentioned, I mean, you, you know, you went from a coordinator to a head coach. So you've just come out of that world. So you yeah. think about what it was like to serve for the guy you served for, you know, the things that you didn't like and you did like, and you know, uh, a lot of times for me, that's also going to change coach to coach. And I, I think you would know that, you know, some coaches are, they want to be an assistant. That's all they want to be. We're going to give them limited roles and limited things they do. Then you got the guys like you want to be a head coach. Well, I would take them under my wing and say, all right, that's what you want. Here's a couple additional responsibilities. Some are fun, some are not so fun, but yeah. this will help you get ready, you know. Okay. Are, are there any, uh, aside from speed and weight training, um, what else have you done to, to help those young men that you've coached develop as, as student athletes? You mentioned kind of going back to your first question, how do I recruit the hallways? Well, when they realize you're honest about that and you're truthful yeah. about that, you're going to be able to recruit those multi-sport kids. It's not always going to be a reciprocated coach. So kind of get ready. Yeah. You're going to get more than you probably get back. And that's okay. okay. But right. I think that has helped. Other things we've done is we've only done drills or we've only done things in our weight room that we can see correlate on a Friday night. Like, I don't like ladders. I don't know how many times I've ever seen one of my receivers look like he's doing the hula dance. You know, we don't <laughs> cut it out. You know, we cut out plyos. You know, like we, we still do jump. We do broad jump. We do all that testing stuff. But how often are you seeing, you know, a kid – jumping up on a box for 30 seconds as fast as possible, you know? So mm -hmm. what translates on a, either a football field or a basketball court or a, if we can't show where that's going to help us win, we don't do it. I like that. Good. Uh, why do you choose a particular offensive or defensive system? And, and when, when is 
that decision up to uh, your coordinators? It, it always needs to be a conversation. You know, for you as a head coach, uh, and, and now I've kind of stepped into an offensive coordinator role, and so I as an OC have gone to the head coach as the DC and said, hey, look, how, are we, how do you think we can win games? You know, can we win games? Are we going to try to win game, low-scoring games where we control the clock and run the ball and, you know, win the turnover battle? Is that your philosophy? Do you want me to go up-tempo and try to score 3,000 points? You know, every team has to figure out, and that starts with you as the head coach, how are we going to win? And it can change from game to game. But generally, how are we going to win games? And how does that match our kids? So, for instance, if I had stayed at Searcy, we would have looked much more like a spread 20 personnel team because that's what our athletes were. You know, we wouldn't throw out all the terminology. We wouldn't throw out all the RPO concepts. We would just change the personnel packages and highlight. Lost you there. It might be me. Got me, there. Coach? Yep, you're back. Okay. Where was I at? Talking about the philosophy on players? Uh, yeah, you were talking about um, utilizing utilizing 20 personnel with, with the guys that you, you, you'd have sure. at Cersei. Sure. And now that I'm at Southside, we've got bigger kids, so we're going to run some too tight stuff, you know, which is not my favorite, like as a coach. I know this sounds weird to guys that have seen my offensive system. Sorry. I like to throw the ball. I like to throw it all over the field, you know, but I've not had that. So we've okay. always adapted to what we have. Same thing defensively. You know, you know, we're going to build a team at Southside this year that's going to have hopefully 10 guys that run a 4-9 or under. You know, that fits a 3-4 nice. system a lot better. It's a lot better than a 4-3 system. Mm -hmm. You know, so we matched personnel. Okay. But as far as head coach, I'm sorry, as far as head coach and coordinator, that's that's ultimately your call, coach. I think there's freedom. You know, like the head coach I'm working with has given me some freedom. Uh, but philosophically, if he tells me we're trying to ground and pound, that's what we're going to do because he's he's the guy whose job's on the line, you know. So I think that starts with you. You know, are we going to – you know? so that's something you need to come up with, but then give them parameters and let them be creative. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, the best, the best that I did last year with that, we our, our running back was probably also our best linebacker, but he got he got hurt one game on on offense, uh, and and no, it, he got hurt one game, and his chin was all cut up, and we we're worried about it bleeding the next week. And I just know he's a better him him being a running back was going to make us a better team than him being out there on the. We had other guys that could almost play as good as, at linebacker. Nobody was going to run the ball like him. So, uh, so 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 you find. You'll find as a head coach that that will be a lot of your personnel will become a huge factor, more so than just on one side of the ball. Okay. Um, and then just to wrap this up, uh, any any other advice you can think of for, for first-year head coaches or, or guys with aspirations to become head coaches? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that we did that I'm really proud that we did as we did a lot of things that talk to the kids about more than football. So we did a father-son retreat. We did a mother-son date night. We talked about their role in the future as fathers. We talked about how they should treat women with their mothers. Uh, we did uh, kind of a theme of the week. Um, and I'm not trying to get people because it's not even out yet, but I'm actually writing a book on that to help coaches that talks about you know, having a word of the week, like honor or whatever it is. And I know it was a coach. Five minutes doesn't sound like much, you know, right now. But yeah. five minutes in October when you've got to win a conference championship, that's a lot of time. Uh, but I never regretted taking that time out, like missing a practice for a father-son retreat or missing a practice for a mother-son date night or taking five minutes instead of doing more individual offices I thought we probably needed to do a, here's a word that you need to understand. I never regretted that. And, and I wish I had done that earlier and more often. Thanks. Outstanding. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, Ed, you're among a list of 
coaches on Twitter that I, I admire quite a bit from a distance and um, really appreciate you uh, squeezing in some time here uh, after, after you spent all day. Well, what's the temperature down there? It's about a, well, fortunately I'm in a building, but it's about 101 here in Arkansas and we got a truck coming in tomorrow and it's one of those deals. The cool deal is now my kid's old enough to work with me, you know, and so getting to spend some time with him is kind of neat. Okay. Oh no! Thanks, thanks for squeezing it in at the end of the day. Greatly oh, appreciate man. it. Sorry to sorry to blare witch it up on you there. My phone was <laughs> dying. I went I read in the middle. So no, I, I understand. Uh, you you, you uh, and that's 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 probably been the the biggest difference in the past week is just how many more how many more kids are texting you and talking. You know, oh, I got basketball. I got this going on, and it's like, man, it's it's summertime. You you go take care of those things that. Get get to the weight room twice out of the four days this this week, and, and we'll be in okay shape. Take care of basketball now in June, and the the summer basketball stuff they do, and, and make sure that's all done by July here. So that's right. Well, hey, coach, stay in touch, man. It's being a head coach. It's a great, a huge responsibility, you know, that I carried for a long time. So I understand mm -hmm. it, and I also understood that I wasn't able to give that time up because it's uh, it's a drain. But just just between you and me, I know people are watching this later on, but do not neglect your family or your kids. Those are some things that I wish time I don't get back. You can't take that time back. So just be aware of that as you're going into it, that if you lose, they'll fire you, but your wife will still be there and your kids will still be there, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you, you want to make sure the wife's still there. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the hope. That's the hope. <laughs> One of those deals. So, okay. All right. Th thanks again. Uh, take care, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. If you'd like to come on and, and talk about anything related to coaching football or the game of football, please hit me up at Coach Clee on Twitter. Uh, check out my YouTube channel, Coaching Football with Brian Clee, or email me at CoachBrianClee at gmail.com.